you know, squatting is one of them ones where I feel that I feel that they are an exercise that needs respect. Oh yeah. And I, I, dis- yeah. I dislike when I see people squat and look like they're butchering the movement. It really does. It's the one I like, I'm not a horrible person, but I do get offended by an ugly squat. That's a nah, t-shirt. Yeah. Remember the podcast is fully sponsored by mutant. I am mutant.com. Hit up the website, iammutant.com. Use your code DUSTY20, Big Ron 20. Either one works fine, no matter what Dusty tries to tell you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, buddy. No, thank you. I was just watching you, you know? earlier, actually, you boys. At the, uh, I was watching a Mutant on a Mission uh-huh. at your gym with you and uh, Dusty. And I no, swear no I saw you Scott wandering around. Yep, that was me in the background. I was like, it's, yeah, I was like, it's definitely Scott walking around. So yeah, yeah, I was watching that earlier. That's awesome. It's no, awesome. thanks for joining us, man. We're happy to have you. This is your third time on the show, I believe. I think third? It is. I think it is. You're the yeah, only yeah, third yeah. three-time offender. Actually. Yeah, you're the only guy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, okay. I'm pretty privileged, I must say. Thank you. Okay, it's well, welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding, everybody. I'm Big Ron Partlow. We got Dusty Hanshaw, the producer Scott McNally, and joining us on today's show, I'm not even going to call him a guest. We're going to call him a, an additional co-host for the week because he is a three-time offender. Of course, the shed James Hollingshead. How's it going, buddy? Very good. It's weird. The number three feels really like. Apparently, I did three sets and everything at the gym. Um, I'm <laughs> yeah. you know, third time on here. I was just thinking about pro shows. I've won three pro shows. I'm like, wow, if it's threes, it's a magic number. Hey, three's time. a good number. That's three's a good number. Keep that in mind sure. from now on. Yeah. 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 Let's get that fourth yeah. and we'll have you on again. Yeah. Yes. And and I, yes. I'm really happy we're getting the, the full trap dealt upper peck <laughs> shot. You know, like give the people what they want. Those people that that, that just die in for an inch of skin. They just can't wait to see a little bit of James. And now all of a sudden they get to see his traps wiggle around for the next hour. (laughs) Well, when I'm I'm streaming, when I'm playing games, I do this. I felt like it'd be really not very fair with it to the community if I don't do this here as well. So so how's the gaming stuff going? I like... Open this little world up to me. What is going on? You're on Twitch and everything. Are you like you're like a separate gaming celebrity, or are you still? No, I wish. I wish. I, I'm bodybuilder James, but I have a great little community on there. Obviously, um, I have a Discord, which is like a, um, a server page, and I have a lot of people in there that just love bodybuilding. Some don't even really love bodybuilding, just love gaming, and we all kind of just talk in there. Last night, I was watching the. Um, the, the pro show and I had a few friends we were all kind of looking at it together watching the pro show just like a good community space and I, I met all these people through gaming rather than bodybuilding typically That's cool. um, but a lot of them now bodybuild because of it so huh. I know I'm not a celebrity in it but it's a good little place to be yeah That's awesome. yeah so what's the main game I mean I I think cool. I know what you do but Call of Duty obviously yeah Call of Duty. but it's every just day. Every day. Call of Duty like everyday Call of Duty the Call of Duty is an everyday one because it's social. So it's like us now, you know, I'm talking to you guys. I could be doing that with my second monitor with my friends on there and we're all playing Call of Duty. Um, but I do play solo games, obviously some campaigns and stuff if, if the story's rich enough to get my attention. But, you know, that's far and few. And I'm still a sucker for old games as well, like Mario and whatnot as well. So oh, I've yeah, been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always been into, like, I, I played games when I was a kid because my mother had a, a Nintendo Entertainment System when I was really small. So... I, my, I, I have fond memories of playing Super Mario Bros. 1 when yeah. I was, like, very, very small. So, yeah. So, I'm, all uh, the way back probably to a OG. Gamer. I'm probably a, Yeah, I'm probably a, ga- I'm a gamer before bodybuilder, really. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, hey, I, I, I got... I, I remember getting an original Nintendo for Christmas when they were, like, new. Like, what was that, 1985, 86? I would have got a been, Nintendo yeah, cause, for Christmas. Cause, cause this was, yeah, because my, my mother had the console, and obviously it was prior to my birth, actually. So, that's yeah. how old you are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and then obviously by the time I was, you know, young infant and able to process and play a game, that was what was available. So yeah, yeah 80s, I'm, I'm, I was in eighties. I was born in eighty nine. I, I must have finished. I must have finished a hundred, two hundred Nintendo games. I must have wrapped. Yeah, yeah. There was and then it was Sega, it was Sega Genesis for me after that. I must have wrapped a couple hundred Sega Genesis games. So those were the mm. good, good I was, old days. I I was never. There was like two factions. You know, you had your Sega people and you had your Nintendo people. And I was always the Nintendo guy. 
and my friends right. all had the Sega because over here the Sega Genesis was called the Sega Mega Drive because oh, North America no. for some reason has different names of consoles like the Nintendo I think the Super Nintendo was called the Super Famicom or something um, Weird. especially okay. in Japan yeah huh. so there's different names but they're the same console yeah. so yeah you guys had the Genesis we had the um, Mega Drive and all the Sonic people were over there and then like I was the Mario guy Oh, oh right. yeah, I guess Sonic <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. started on there. Yeah, Sonic yeah, Center, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah. So, if you ask someone like really like in life, if there's one question like, "What sort of person are you?" and they don't know, you know, like the fundamental um, question to "What sort of person are you?" you will confuse someone asking them. But the only real question that should be answered is, "Is it Sonic or Mario?" Like that is <laughs> right. Okay, okay. It's not, are you a boy or a girl? It's not are you, you know, <laughs> just cut through it all. It's yeah. are you Sonic iPhone, or Android, or yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sonic yeah. or Mario? <laughs> that will solve, solve everything, and that will make sense of everything about that person. The the reason the reason I got into into the Sega was because they were the that was the first system that had EAS John Madden football and NHL hockey. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo yeah. didn't have those yet, so when those games came out, they were Sega Genesis games. And then yeah, I was a John Madden football and NHL hockey addict for like years after that. You know, good times. Yeah, a lot of people like the sports games. Like I, the only one really I really got into like the sports one, and obviously you know, I think a lot of people did was like when Tony Hawk's came out, like at the skate oh. skateboard. Oh yeah, That's yeah. When, like that was just like polarizing how good that was, and I really enjoyed that. But the I didn't really play many of the soccer. We played a little bit like the soccer ones. You had Pro Evolution Soccer when we was a kid and FIFA. Um, Again, you get a lot of people to play those, but I've, I don't know, I always like the more obscure sports. So, like, you obviously do BMXing. There was one called Matt Hofton BMXing. Oh, yeah. Right. Matt had a so game. That, yeah, that would have been something that you would have liked. And that was a game oh, I played yeah, as well. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I just saw a funny Instagram reel with Tony Hawk uh, being interviewed, and they said, How much did you make off that game? And he said that when Tony Hawk 4 came out, he went for lunch with the guy from Activision or whatever. <laughs> And and the top the first three Tony Hawks were still in the top ten sales. Wow! And the fourth one was coming out, and the first one was being sent into what's called classic mode, where they relicense it to like a million yeah, like other platinum. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he said the guy handed. He said uh, the games are going really well. We want to update <laughs> you here with a little four million dollar check. Whoa! A little four million check. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. He said it's the biggest check, the biggest single check he ever got was from Activision or whatever, wow. EA, whatever, whatever gaming that is. When uh, number four came out, he got a four million dollar check. So I was like, That's "Oh man!" <laughs> I remember the Tony Hawk series was cool because it was, I think, the very first game that licensed real music. Real music, yeah. You had like a that right. song, oh, Ace, yeah, of Spades. Yeah. Ace of Spades. Remember. Ace well, of Spades. He, yeah, That's fucking Motorhead was in there, and yeah. and they had all the punk bands, and you started yeah. to get on that skate punk genre. Pink it was like boosted from yeah, Tony had, Hawk, one, two, three, yeah. four, Megadeth. Like they had, like yeah, and, and it's funny because my training partner, I'll put a song on when we're training at his gym. I'll put some music on, and he'll go, "Oh, I know this song from Tony Hawk too, or whatever." <laughs> <laughs> it did. I think I think that game steered a lot of people's music taste. Oh because yeah! At the time, you might you might not have really been considering. I remember being a kid, not really considering music until I heard it, you know, through something else that wasn't the musical means, and then actually getting interested in music. So for a lot right. of people, that would have been their like introduction to a group, like like yeah. say Big One Eight Two or whatever, it would have been yeah. through a game. So game is responsible for a lot of interests, really. I I heard that the new Grand Theft Auto. Someone told me the the newest version. There's a radio station because you know you can change the radio station. Yeah. There's one that just plays nonstop Joe Rogan forever. That's what I've heard. There's a rumor. No kidding. No kidding. There's a rumor that Joe Rogan's podcast is one of the stations. Yeah, and it just the infinite <laughs> yeah. loop of like 2,000 episodes of Joe Rogan. It'll yeah. just play forever. <laughs> I, I can see that being the case because GTA have mega money. Like they, that that franchise they got Spotify like, money. Like, yeah, they've got they've got they've got crazy money. I think they've done something like they're in like the billions of sales, like yeah. from that game. And it's still played today because it's uh, on online. So the last one they brought out, which is Grand Theft Auto V, because they just update it all the time because it's an online game as well. It's had a yeah. lifespan of like, God knows how many years. And I heard a rumor again the other day that when number six drops, the price for that game is going to be $150 just for the game because of how much content's packed into it, which is no kidding. triple nearly what a normal game costs. So wow. pretty crazy. Yeah, but when you got a product like that, you can do that. You can be like, "Hey you guys, can. a new one. It's three times as expensive, and it's yeah. crazy." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, when you're established cool. like that, and people who would want have thought product, that 
beating up hookers and setting cops on fire would be so <laughs> profitable. <laughs> well, that just shows, doesn't that just show like how uh, morally um, kind of messed up we are as humans? Because we're basically just using that game to, vic- you know, to live vicariously through what, an avatar that we wish we could act like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so we, we know we're going to get arrested if we go outside and do some of these, you know, uh, the, haters' crimes. The, the last like, in real one life, I played, like, you've got an opportunity. <laughs> I, I played San Andreas for a while. I played the San Andreas one for a while, and you could like go to the gym and work out and get oh, stronger. You eat the food and get tonk, get massive, and yeah. then you could yeah. like eat more and get bigger, and then you could just like walk around and beat up people. And <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Just, it's just crazy. Yeah, oh, no, that was great. That was great. I, I love that man. Yeah. So yeah, gaming man. What what a thing. So how many how many hours a day? How many hours a day? Like. Like, like, take us through this. Is like two hours a day? Honestly, or like, you go down so like rabbit holes on my, weekends? Yeah. Or? yeah, I'll wrap up my day at like this kind of time typically. So everything's done for the day, you know, training and etc. cetera. Um, any calls or emails to do with like the gym and stuff. And then, uh, you know, I'll say to the lads, I'll be like, I'm aiming to be on by like 8 p.m. And I'll probably play till close to midnight. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> and part of that's like a awesome. social thing part of that's a social thing yeah. too because you're like hanging out with your friends right it's absolutely social for me because there's a roster of friends I have that can loop because there's probably enough of us to have probably a cycle of about three teams so if I catch up on a Monday with you know three of my friends yeah, Tuesday quite likely to have a different two join the group and catch up so throughout the week you're just basically socialising with different members yeah, it's not of exactly friends. the same people every day no. you might miss you yeah. might miss a day or something yeah yeah and i missed the odd day like yesterday because the um obviously we had this the europa um championship i was watching that stream so i didn't play yesterday but mm-hmm. i'll catch up with some people tonight and you know you get a lot of people like oh gaming's like throwing your life away but not if you've done everything else for the day that you need to do sure right. you know? yeah i used to Sometimes play get, all the, like, the, the boxes com- I played like the, the computer, the PC games back when like, yeah. Doom was out. I remember playing Wolfenstein. Doom. Yeah, Wolfenstein. Yeah. And then you yeah. would beat it, and at the end, it would it would tell you like how many hours you invested into actually completing the game. I'd be like, oh crap, whoa, I spent a lot of time. time. I don't this. want to know that. I don't want to know that. No, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, because no, then you do feel guilty. <laughs> but now I'm seeing, you know, uh, in the in the shooting world, like competitive shooters and guys who are just collectors and stuff, and all the gun tubers, they th- there are people that are uh, that are gamers that are now actually getting into like actually collecting real guns and shooting. Yeah. And the most popular firearms are the ones that you can get in games. Those are the That's ones that everybody wants to buy too. now. So it's like it, there's yeah. a lot of crossover, you know. Well, we were talking about certain, you know, certain uh, types of guns before this. And uh, yeah. like I say, many of them are present in Call of Duty and they're available. So <laughs> if you can get yeah, them and yeah. you want to collect them, then, you know, why not? Um, you know, it's, it goes beyond just, any, you know, any game genre, there's often something within that that is a, something you wish to collect. I got yeah. a lot of collector's pieces up behind me. So there's a shelf like up here okay. with like characters from the Resident Evil franchise because I'm really oh, into like Resident yeah, Evil. Yeah. So I'm going to grab one down just to show you. So yeah, you yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to see this. I'll remind everyone to like, share, oh, subscribe, you go. So you got- comment, yeah. and ring the bell. Oh, there whoa. we go. Oh, hell it. yeah, that. dude. Damn. Oop. That's wild. How much is something like that? So, you know, cost? stuff like that. Whether it be How like the like actual gun from the game. <laughs> yeah. That's not that bad. That's, that's probably only about, I think I got that for about 75 pounds. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, some, some are more expensive than others for sure, but that that's that's pretty reasonable. That one, yeah. And that's uh, that's, that's by a company called. If anyone wants to know, by a company called Numskull, and uh, they're they, you know if you're looking for an affordable piece to put in your room, they're pretty good. I have got something coming actually, that was like a thousand pounds, a big one. Yeah, um, but it's, it was a pre-order, so it it won't be dispatched till like the year's end, and I've basically been waiting about a year from it. So for it, so. Yeah, I, um, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend buying the expensive ones, but sometimes you see something you really love and you're like, okay, I've got to get that. So you what, said what, too. What, what, oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Scott. I, I was going to say, you uh, you said that like, so a lot of the guys that you play games with, they weren't initially into bodybuilding, but you said now they're getting into it. You've Are you yeah, saying yeah. like you've influenced some of the guys that you, you play the games yeah. with? Yeah, like it works two ways. Like they've introduced me to perhaps a style of game that I would have never even looked at. And then some of them joined this discord community weren't overly into anything, but gaming and now like join the gym and they're like, 
you know, a year because we all met during lockdown actually. So it was like my I started this Discord during like the the COVID era. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So these people have all met each other since then. So a lot of habits have been developed since then. And obviously, one of the things that a lot of people probably decided they want to do after that time was look after themselves. Hmm. So mm-hmm. fortunately, you know, a lot of them were introduced to the idea of going to the gym, perhaps eating better, and um, just generally taking more consideration in you know your physicality and how you feel so yeah a lot of the guys that weren't training you know two years ago three years ago whatever it was now are a year or two deep into their training now and some of them have competed for the first time like recently and stuff so it's yeah it's really cool that's cool it's really cool that's yeah. cool to see that spreading, influence. We're, spreading the, we're spreading the word you know we're spreading the word yeah. yeah yeah so james is like the biggest nerd that must exist you know what i'm saying yeah. you you're, you're a total nerd in a good way you know I, I but, love like, it. <laughs> but he breaks the mold you know Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can it's, we can talk sci-fi movies if you want to. Oh, compare. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, see, well, I, don't, I don't know how I compare with movies because I don't think I'm the best person in movies, but different I, I layers of nerd. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't watch a lot of new stuff. Okay. Right. So if you if you were to throw something at me, maybe that's a bit older. Then maybe I have a little bit. Yeah. More. Same here. You know, I can talk, about, I can talk about Terminator Two all day. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or I could talk about, um, I don't know, Bam Stoker's Dracula all day, like stuff like that. Is yeah. no problem. But I'm right. not as, uh, yeah, I'm not as in keeping really with, I suppose, movies of new, just because I feel like a lot of it's just a repeat of some of the good stuff that was already done. You know, yeah. right? I agree. Yeah. How do you, I wind how up do you continue? How do you continue to take film forward? You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. I'm. I feel well, like. I'm hard I, to what do you like then? Yeah. What do you like? You're Star Trek guy or something? Well, yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm actually like a quite a Trekkie. I know a lot about Star Trek. I'm, you look like a Trekkie. I, you do look. Like I a grew up. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on the on obviously like the original and Next Generation and Voyager and all that yeah. stuff was kind of my my bag when I was growing up. But I really liked Star Trek because I thought they were. I I thought like, you know, that's true sci-fi. You know, I never considered. Like that's, like, I felt like that's the way that things were perhaps going yeah and i i guess it's sort of i don't know i think roddenberry was like a genius because he you know if you think about what he did in the late 60s with that tv show you know he had telephones predicted you know all sorts of stuff yeah and he also what he did he had a black female officer communications officer he had a russian pilot he had a japanese navigator very inclusive he had uh, yeah, but it was his vision of the future but, where the world is united world and we're is no like longer that, yes. divided by politics. Well, that's why there was, an episode where, there was an episode where, wasn't it, um, it was uh, the president, uh, Lincoln, kind of speaks to the lady in in a in a certain way that wasn't rude, but showing of our times. And then he actually is like educated by them and like, oh, this is good. Like he understands that in their time, yes. how things have progressed and moved forward and everyone's kind of, you know. yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was. I, I felt like better. the thing I liked about the old Star Trek was every episode had like an underlying moral, yeah. like dilemma, yeah, that yeah. must be dealt with. And I just saw, like, looking back, I'm like, I think it was actually an integral part of growing up as a kid and who I yeah. developed to be was like these little moral lessons every week. You know what I mean? Do the doing the right sure. thing and you know all that sort yeah. of stuff. So it's just interesting, but at the time you don't realize it. You know, right? It's and funny you say think- that because I, I was I was thinking the other day, and this isn't quite the same. But I was thinking about like, obviously, you have a parent, but you also have influences from external sources. And I was sitting in the garden doing a video for some channel that I do some stuff for, and I was kind of talking about bodybuilding and how it's kind of it nurtures a lot of your personality and your morals, um, just because of exposure to certain individuals or whatever. And, you know, I was trying to say that it's not obviously just bodybuilding, but I can speak from my history because my history is involved heavily in bodybuilding. That A lot of my parenting, although from my parents, also came from bodybuilding. And that's why I have such a uh, a love towards what we do, because I feel it's responsible for a lot of what I am, because <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it was part of your it was part of your development as a human, like you say, because you were doing it from a young age or you're exposed to it from a young age. A lot of your traits and your attributes and your opinions or yeah. moral compass comes from the environment that you was around during that time. And whether that be from, you know, programs, musical influence, parents, 
or bodybuilding, wherever you spend the most time in and involved in, is going to be heavily responsible for the person you become. And I was basically just trying to do a video basically saying the reason I can praise bodybuilding so heavily is because I feel it's responsible for teaching me many good lessons. Yeah. Um, right. And it's just funny you say that because it kind of, it related to how it taught you a lot, even though it's not actually your direct parent, but there's that influence there that is really, really important and fundamental during the developing stages of a person coming up. I can oh, relate yeah. to that. Yeah, I think yeah. we all can relate yeah. to that. Yeah. Having, um, there's like so much, I mean, we know so much data now about when someone's in the formidable years of their life, you know, that, that teenage, <clears throat> that teenager era, you know, <laughs> And, and they have something that they think about all day because they, they can't wait to do it. Mm -hmm. mm. How much less wandering and less trouble they get into and less, you huh. know, uh, wondering who they are as a person and just all that stuff mm. is minimized when there's something that they're thinking about all day. And I remember just like my entire day was just noise until I got to the gym, mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. And, and just having that focus and then like you grow up later in life and you realize you're like, oh, I have to have that focus every single day on something. That's just how I am now. I like mm, got yeah. wired by that. Like yeah, every single day, yeah. there's something I'm doing today. Like every yeah. day has a main event. There's sure. a main event every day sure. that's like happening and that's never going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, uh, yeah. It, yeah. So that I just think if I wouldn't have had that, you know, people that don't know what they're mm. doing with their day, that feeling. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's odd, that's an odd uh, thought to even imagine because you're also working towards a long-term goal with short-term decisions. And I yeah. feel like that's something that people, if you don't play sports as a kid or you're not in the gym, <clears throat> where do you get that lesson or losing or, you know, like I loved watching mm. our youngest try to get her bench up because she'd miss mm. and then there's frustration. I'm like, oh, good. I mean, yeah. you know, something, something means something to you. Yeah. 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 You know, but, yeah. but then after three, four weeks of hitting a number, when she hits it, I'm like, she, she thinks this is just having fun and training. I'm like, this is your whole life. Yeah. Cause like, you're going to be facing built. this. This is what you face for the rest of your life. Hmm. Challenges yeah. and, and, and yeah, overcoming. Like never stops. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like ever. It Once it starts, just, it just changes, doesn't it? It just changes. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think as you get, I know from my own experience, getting older, it's kind of hard because you feel like you have to look for that. Um, because you can find yourself even later in life feeling more lost, even though there's more to you. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, in oh, regards absolutely. to like, I, I felt like, I think for people of like our kind of like age groups and beyond, like for example, bodybuilding, how it's changed very much. And I don't like to put it down i'm not putting it down because different doesn't mean bad it just means different mm. the environment is one i don't recognize as much and mm. i found myself trying to find my environment because i couldn't relate to the one that's current um mm -hmm. and that's something i kind of went through and i have been going through and i still think i go through quite a lot because things are very different now but um again i don't know where i'm really going with that but one of my like latest challenges i think in life has been just trying to make sure that i can somehow put my vision onto something that keeps me on the straight like you said there like you have to have something that you know motivates you or draws you and it's a it's a you have to have some sort of quest and purpose um mm -hmm. and and i think you know for anyone listening you'll probably find as you get older even though you've established a lot and f you know created a lot you change and sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where you're like, wow, like for some reason I've done a lot of things, but I still feel like I need to do more or something different, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's the whole idea yeah. is that you, you, you know, once you get used to, like, I can't, we talk about this in my house sometimes, like I can't imagine going to a job that I didn't care about just as paying my bills and then coming home and doing nothing and just like <laughs> yeah. watching TV because I get stressed. Like even when things are going really, really well, Eric, uh, okay, I need a challenge. I mean, that's why Ron got back on the bike or you do different things. Like you mm. need some sort of a challenge. Um, I wanted to ask though, James, kind of a tie in. So when you mentioned that things, you know, you don't really recognize bodybuilding as much, um, is that why you kind of have made some of the adjustments between like the gym and, you know, Endeavor or, Hiring Milos, is that all to bring that stuff back all, to life? It's, yes, yeah, it's all to do with that. It has <laughs> to be because your decisions are ultimately based on what you're feeling, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Even if I recognize it or not, you know, systemically you're making decisions consciously without realizing because you need something to change. So anything I've done, whether it's hire Milos, decide to open a gym, 
is stemming from something internally that is is required you know and um i definitely i can identify it now like i'm creating a gym because i do need change of environment i need one that's more along the lines of what i wish to create mm-hmm. um and then with milos like i said on the other podcast just trying to reestablish a connection with people that are from an era where this kind of meant more um mm-hmm. and wasn't so wasn't just about popularity because popularity doesn't really mean anything to me it more so about just purpose and passion because hmm. I feel like there's just a lack of that now it just feels like there's an immediate race to be known and the race to be known is just something I don't find very attractive at all and hmm. it's hard to be in an environment that you find unattractive mm-hmm. um, it's very forced you know going into the gym and you know I, I'm up for people filming themselves and wanting to challenge themselves and again I can't say it's wrong because I think if you're born with a generation later where that is the way that's all you know so it's fair enough I just know that for me personally, it just feels very off and um, I find it very hard to be me in in certain environments. So yeah, I suppose I'm just trying to find an environment that feels more along the lines of what I require, I suppose. Hmm. Do, do you think yeah. with the gym um, that will enable you to, you know, help some younger guys to see, uh, like you said, another option or things like that? Because I, I ask because that's something like we talk about, obviously, is, um, you know, how do you help boys become men that don't have that background? You know, yeah. is that sign up? Are you hoping to be able to do that with the gym as well as get some people in there? I and am. Have, I, I think a lot. Way? Yeah. I think something that like Ron said on the video like earlier that I was watching, I think one of the most important things and kind of makes that happen is just being present in general. Like, I think... Mm-hmm. I know that King's Gym, when I was really involved with it, had a way better, and I hate to say it, had a way better environment and essence to it. And people were doing, I don't know, they were, I don't know where it is. There was just something that was just better. And mm-hmm. then, you know, I detached myself just because of my own reasons kind of thing. Um, and you feel the shift, the tonal shift, which just isn't one that I think is that good because there's no face there. There's no one leading the way for the people. No one presenting mm-hmm. themselves to show people the right way hmm. um yeah i think it's very important for somewhere to have um it's not like it has to have an identity mm-hmm. and whether that identity is a selective group of people or one person or just something there just has to be something and something without any identity for me a soulless place can only breed soulless result i just don't think it can lead to anything positive um so you know my my intentions of the gym that i'm opening is pretty much like ron like I'll be there every day because I like to be like I'll be around and I'll be there in person to motivate even if I don't say something to people even if I'm just there and people are like this guy's done this walk this knows this and you know I might want to be there myself so just by him walking through the doors you kind of subconsciously turn it on and work harder because yeah, I did uh-huh. the same when I grew up and I'm not saying like that from an, like an egotistical view I don't think I'm some person that can make a room light up but I know when I was coming up that if I was around a professional who I admired or respected, it was certainly something I found very motivational. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah. It's never a bad thing. So yeah, basically I just want to be, I just want to be an energy and give some energy because I love give. I think giving is way better than receiving and I'm at an age where I don't really feel like I need to receive much. I'm, I'm much more um, content when I see something I do, do something for someone else. And I think just mm-hmm. being present and spotting the odd person and, saying let's go let's do this set i think that can go so much further and actually i think it benefits me as well selfishly with my own acceptance of where i am in life sure i can promise you that you will find immense amounts of uh reward both Hmm. expected and unexpected Hmm. and the like i don't I don't think you um, like. I, obviously, you're a smart guy. You know it's coming, but I don't think you realize how how uh, how much of a powerful motivator and inspiration you could be when when it's your gym, you know. Mm. And uh, and people like you know people are going to come there first of all for a reason, and they'll find it, you know. So yeah. I'm excited for you. I think you're going to love it. You know? I like th- th- this. Is like such a it, it's really a, such a deep conversation, but. Because I can relate to everything you're saying, James, and I kind of feel like that sometimes you can feel that I can feel that sense of like, hey, this doesn't feel like like I can think of like going to the Arnold Classic in modern days versus a decade mm. ago. And and yeah. how how do I feel fitting in there 
compared to then. Mm. And obviously I'm older now too. And it just, there, there's a couple, I think, ways that you can approach it. And the first way is almost out of fear mm-hmm. and thinking like, okay, well, what do I need to do to fit in now? Yeah, you know what uh-huh. I mean? And, and I think yeah. that what you're doing is stopping and you're saying like, well, instead of trying to figure out what do I need to do to fit in with this, how do I cultivate the world that I want? You know, I, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. And I feel I, I, can, I, I can relate yeah. to that a lot, too. It's a it's a good message just overall. It's a, you're, you're a real genuine person, man. And I, and I always like to hear that kind of shit. I, I expect nothing less from this conversation. I, I <laughs> yeah. always appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think um, I think like to like force yourself to fit in is probably one of the because I, I say it's this whole like comparison is the biggest evil. And hmm, if you're yeah. changing yourself to be like someone else, that's because you're comparing yourself to someone else and feeling like what you are isn't adequate. Mm-hmm. So you need to have a bit of faith in who you are, I suppose. And it's easier said than done. And we all question, you know, our, our everything, our everything. What are we? What are we about? What do we stand for? But I, I do think it's a mistake for anybody to like kind of give up on everything they've developed through their entire life just to fit into a an environment or a crowd just to be a pleaser um, yeah. because you can please the right people. You'll always attract the right people. Won't you? If you remain yourself, at least then the people that like you or understand you are going to make themselves present. And then you don't have to ever pretend because pretending is hard. Pretending is hard. Imagine having to act yeah. every day. Huh. It's not something that anyone should have to really do. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Obviously it's a venture with Jordan and Jordan's great. I love Jordan. He's uh, he's one of my you know best friends as much as he's, he's, a recluse and likes to just train in the private spaces of Kojo's private gym. I'm sure I'll be able to drag him down for the old session <laughs> at the gym. He won't be there as much as me. I can tell you that now because I, 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 I get Jordan. I understand him. He's a creature of like kind of comfort. Um, mm. But, you know, as a, as a really good friend of his and a business partner, um, I value him heavily and I'll be there a lot. And that's a part of this kind of agreement that I'm happy to, to work on because that's the part of me actually that I enjoy being. So yeah. I'll drag him down there for the old one. <laughs> what's the, uh, what's the whole uh, estimated ETA to like be, be open and running? December, what's that? December, the December. Um, so only a few months now. We've that's got, freaking awesome. Yeah. We've got, we've got the majority of our kit. I've got some stuff that um, I just need to get a container and sort out, send some stuff that I personally chose as well. We've already got our, um, Atlantis stuff in place. Uh, Prime orders already um, got a due date in October because um, it was ordered like over a year ago. You know, it's like Prime; it takes forever to come. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got much. Cybex yeah. stuff. We've got you know, like all the all the things that we kind of wanted. The good thing is, like mm-hmm. you guys, you all know your equipment and you know what you like. So, one thing that's really cool that I have ordered actually, and this is kind of to do with my upbringing. I've ordered the Cybex range. There's like five pieces of equipment they have. They're actually like wheelchair accessible. They have right. this. Um, they have like an adjustment to them. So if you're able-bodied, you can still use them as well. But they have like this, like kind of pin, kind of set up on the seats where you can like swivel them out the way, huh. and it allows for wheelchair access. So I've bought basically a pull-down, a row, a bicep curl, a chest press, and a shoulder press because we have the Arnold Classic here in the UK, the UK one, and there's a wheelchair class, and you know with. We're an hour from Birmingham where the gym's going to be situated. And if people want to come and train and I just want people to be able to come and do their thing with no limitations. Hmm. Um, I say like from my childhood, because when I, my best friend growing up, actually his brother was um, suffered with a condition called spina bifida. Yeah. So mm-hmm. basically his lower body was like, it, it didn't do anything. Like he literally didn't have any um, strength in his lower body underdeveloped, but he was um, a really into sport kind of guy. And he, played uh, basketball for like team GB wheelchair team B GB and he trains and I see him train on Instagram still to this day. And I was like, you know what, if I can get a few bits of kit that allow for people like my friend to, to train with no like awkwardness, mm-hmm. that'd be brilliant. So I kind of, the gym's kind of sentimental to me as well. Cause although it's a gym just for, like, you know, for the bodybuilders and whatnot, it is an opportunity and a chance to provide something for people that have um, difficulty finding a space like that. Mm-hmm. But again, again, in Kings, I used to have a couple of people that used to come train there that actually had some conditions. I don't know what the conditions was, but 
basically some like upper body conditions that cause them to have like irregular irregular irregularities kind of in their development and they were always really really pleasant and kind and very happy when they found themselves on a piece of equipment that was able like unilateral and stuff like that so they could use it for themselves Mm because they weren't like symmetrical and that that gave me a great joy like when Mm. when these guys would give me good feedback like that so i thought to myself now i have the gym myself and i have an opportunity i think this is going to be a, a chance to kind of do that and you know i just think it's a good thing to do and i think that'll be really great and uh the kit's good like able-bodied people can use it as well because the seats are like kind of they slot in and whatnot and they're a good piece of equipment it's all the cybex stuff that we recognize mm-hmm. so um nice. kill two birds one stone good equipment for everybody and it allows for people that uh you know aren't able-bodied to be able to still use the same equipment that's awesome that's man. awesome man so i gotta ask you where were you squatting seven and a half plates the other day? Oh, I got that That's video around. That's Orpington. That's Orpington. Uh, John, Yo, that was at Orpington. Of okay, I yeah. figured it was a muscle there? works because I recognize the plates. No, I haven't been to the Orpington. Okay, so John's the, every plate's a Lico. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Plate. I yeah, yeah. I've been to the uh, the Bentho Green, Bentho Green location. Green. Yeah, John. So. John's like no expense spared. Like I, the the plates in his gym alone are probably like. Oh, a freaking half a million like pounds he's got worth two hundred of those forty five. Yeah, 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 yeah Good, literally. Yeah. And uh, there is not a different plate in the gym. That is the only plates in the gym. Yeah. See, yeah. see. Precision <laughs> <elite Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you spend your money on the plate. Like, I'm like, nah, man. I'm dreading it. Um, but John's like that. He's a sucker for that. He loves that stuff. Are you gonna? We gotta play. You gonna play that, Scott? So I don't okay. have the seven and a half. I have the seven plate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Video. Well, you which did to seven me, and a half for a triple, right? It was. A, I just did a double. I just double, did a double. double. I did, I did, I did a, a set with two sixty six plates for whatever it was for twelve. Twelve. Yeah. And then and then and then a seven for six and then a, a seven and a half for two. Yeah, I was the seven impressed for six. Is by crazy. The, yeah, I was impressed by this. I mean, the, the seven and a half is it wasn't crazy. Bad. It, it, this is beautiful, this felt, man. This felt really nice, to be fair. It's the first time I've actually barbell squatted in probably about four months. No kidding. <laughs> why not just load it up? I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> why not just put it there? Why not? <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it. That do it is There's still crazy. Space on, there's still space on the bloody bar. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and I want people to see that control in that negative. You know what I mean? I see so many people that are just like, just dropping down and bouncing yeah, back yeah, up. Yeah. Like yeah. You're owning every ounce of this set. You know, squatting is one of them ones where I feel that I feel that they are an exercise that needs respect. Oh yeah. And I, I, dis- yeah. I dislike when I see people squat and look like they're butchering the movement. It really does. It's the one I like, I'm not a horrible person, but I do get offended by an ugly squat. That's a t-shirt. Cause I feel like there's no excuse. I feel yeah. like there's no excuse. Cause I, I hear all this like all the time. Oh, but my leverages or my limbs and my height, but I know friends that are like a bit taller or a bit shorter than me and their proportions are the same as mine. So I'm like, it's not like you've got like a super long torso or, or super long femurs in, in comparison to your torso. So there's no excuse. Just practice the right. movement because you can get a good squat if you practice. The only thing right. I will say that limits people could be a bit of ankle mobility, which yeah, right. you can work on or you can get a little bit of a, you can get a wedge. Yeah. Yep. So exactly. No excuses, people. You can always squat tidily. <laughs> squat tidily <laughs> and carry a big stick. Yeah. That's yeah. James' <laughs> advice. Squat um, tidily. Yeah, I, I was. I only and the reason I did do squats yesterday is because there was a gentleman in there who was performing some really nice squats, and I was like, I actually need to man up and get back to this. It inspired you, um, huh? He did. He did. He had he had like two hundred kilograms or something on there, which is a really decent amount of weight, and he had some. He was getting some good sets on there, and I thought, Jay, man, like, you just got to stay loyal to what you're potentially able, uh, capable to do. Like, don't go in the gym and ever go under what you're capable of. Hmm. because mm-hmm. then before you know it you've done four weeks of that and then you'll then you have to work back up so just uh, get back on it yeah because uh, yeah. there's a fear you know you, you know if you stay away from something that's hard it becomes harder hmm. yeah oh for sure so I, was like, so I was like yeah don't let that happen jay because then everyone's gonna overtake you <laughs> so <laughs> i don't want that I, I love when you see that in the gym though and i, and I we talk about it on the show all the time but you know just the other day we're in the gym and you know i don't really spend a lot of time paying attention to anyone else but you maybe no. between sets kind of look over and you happen to notice someone just flawlessly squatting. I don't care if it's two plates. I'm like, yeah. damn, you just don't yeah, see that. Them, so you're like, mm. I, I have to walk over and say something every time because I'm like, 
I don't see that often, you know, or, or there's, there's a, there's a kid at our gym. Um, I've told the guys about this, but uh, his name's Daniel. And we're in the gym one day, it was late. And I see this kid, he's got four plates on the bar. He's probably, it's on the ground. He probably weighs, I don't know, 165 pounds, Ooh. 170 pounds, you know? And I go, ah, he's going to sumo it, but that's cool. I still want to watch. So I kind of watch and then he just grabs it. Normal, just a dead nice. three Good. reps. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, you know, this, this kid's in high school. I had to walk over. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and I guess now he's got like a 535 dead. Nice. I'm like, there we that go. Was you know? I, do love a, I do love a good deadlift as well. I feel like that's, a, I, I respect a good deadlift. Um, I do have, my, I, do have I do have, and say stuff, yeah, yeah. I do have, I do have a stand on that whole sumo versus regular for sure. Like I am that guy that was <laughs> made. <laughs> because I've seen it. I've seen guys that there was this world strongest man just happened. There was like this deadlift competition and there was a few gentlemen in there that are very known for their sumo being huge. Okay. But the competition yeah. only allowed conventional. Ah, right. And, and it shaved over a hundred kilograms off all of them. No kidding. Yeah. So, so that's just, that's for me, that's enough to explain how hard a conventional deadlift is in comparison, and that's why it's a superior movement in Myers. Hmm, yeah. um, gonna probably get some comments below, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're, I always, always, I raised this question as well. I said to, I said in a group one day, I said, when you were younger, and someone said deadlift, what stance was the first one you did when you first attempted a deadlift? And everyone yeah. was like conventional. Yeah. Of so course. I was like, then that is what you know. That's what we all subconsciously believed to be the way to pull up the maximum amount of weight yeah mm-hmm. so i don't know yeah i'm i'm, I'm, a, mis- I'm mr conventional for sure i've never really tried sumo i t- actually think it looks like it's gonna hurt so i've just kind of stayed here for <laughs> do you know what i mean i don't I, i've got a feeling like your groin's gonna like get pulled on it or something so i just don't go anywhere near that i, I think it has its place i think like i've seen people some people at sumo that have really good development you know in their like kind of glutes and like adductors yeah but yeah i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it to be like oh i've got the biggest sumo deadlift in the world for sure. Yeah, that right. used to be like a, a high rep thing that I did when I first got started. I trained with JJ Marsh and he was an 80s, 90s bodybuilder. And he was big on, <clears throat> we'd do weightless walking lunges every single day. Hmm. And yeah, then totally. he'd have me do sumo deads like four days a week, but just two plates aside for like sets of 20. And just yeah. drive the well, hips. That was, you know, yeah, that was, that was kind of like doing. what? Yeah, that's kind of like what like Patrick Tor kind of had me doing. Not that essentially, but he would have me on like a. I would often go onto like a, a T bar, like a ground one, where it's mm-hmm. got like the two foot stands, and then I'd lift the T bar up so you can hold a dumbbell and like goblet squat almost down into the hole with a wide stance. Yeah, yep. and essentially I was just doing the same as like a, a, a kind of sumo. I was kind of just squeezing my ass really. Yeah, and uh, for bodybuilding, I thought it was a great movement. I still believe yeah. that there are some really good movements that are based purely on feeling. I know a lot of people are like, oh, what you feel doesn't necessarily mean what it does, but I, I, I disagree with that. I think if you can feel that you're really contracting a muscle hard under load, then it's definitely going to hit that area. So that's why I would say with like a sumo, for example, that you do feel your glutes get a lot of work. It's mm-hmm. definitely going to be great at building you a big old ass for sure. Yeah. Right. So if you've got weak glutes, like Michael Crizzo, Mike Crizzo. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. like you, Michael, but you need a bigger ass. So just some sumo, sumo deadlifts and then you've got the you've probably got Mr. Olympia's physique then. <laughs> Crazy. So I want to ask you a question. How's things with the coach? So far so good. Um I haven't bothered him too much, if I'm honest, because obviously he's had the boys competing. Yeah. So I'm and like, you just started, just, right? Like this is a couple, yeah, couple I'm weeks like a, or so. I'm a few weeks in and okay. I, I've, I've, you know, I've put on some weight. Yeah. Um, obviously we know Milos has his specific kind of approach. He's very into his glycogen, let's just say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I think I've gone from like, it's probably like 280 pounds, probably I'm close to like, I'm probably sitting about 300 now. No. Um, okay. And, and I so found quite, I feel quite, yeah, I feel quite lean with it because I do think when you have endogenous, can I say, can I say on here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Able to, yeah so obviously endogenous insulin, I think like if you control your food like well and use mm. it and sensible with it, I do believe it helps keep you quite lean because obviously you're controlling blood sugar very well if you use it properly. So right. I do feel I do feel like actually leaner at this 300 than I have in the past without insulin in present. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, I, I feel pretty good. Um, it's a lot, a lot of nutrition, like the protein went up quite a high amount in comparison to what I was doing. And that was quite hard to do. 
um, because I do find that I get sick of like chicken and stuff really quick. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. So with that though, what you do is he's quite open to like variety. So if you want to eat fish instead, eat fish instead. So the last like today, for example. I went food shopping and I just stocked up on a load of like white fish fillets, like cod, bassa, just things I find more palatable with a minute that aren't so dry and boring. So mm-hmm. he's cool. He's cool. No, I Minos is good. I, I like Minos and I'm interested to see what happens. I definitely feel like um, what he wanted to get out of me is just like fill out. I definitely feel like that's happening and I think it'll put me in really good stead for when I do decide to compete, which hopefully will be like March time. So right. w- were you already in a surplus then before you started working with yeah, him and, and pushing I, 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 up? I, I was, and then I scaled back a bit because I was dieting because I was actually going to do the show yesterday. Okay. The one that everyone done. I was actually going to diet for that earlier in the year, but then I developed kind of Kamasja, and I'll talk about that actually because it's quite interesting. Um, I So anyway, I was prepping and um, I had kind of Kamasja, which I never had to that degree before. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I've pinpointed why. I do know why. Um you guys talk about on gear and stuff, so you know all this. I was using Masteron to try and like inhibit uh, estrogen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And whether I don't know whether the Masteron I was using was Masteron or not. Oh. I do believe it was. I do believe it was, but I don't okay. think Master. I don't think Masteron for me crushes estrogen. Okay. I, I just don't think it does. I think Primo Bolin perhaps might be a, a much better option. But mm-hmm. I was I was not really into the Primo because it's 100 mil per mil. Fuck sure. doing that every day. Thanks for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, a lot more um, logistics to that. Yeah, a lot more logistics to it. So I was doing the master on, and, and I was actually doing quite low testosterone in comparison, so to prevent anything happening. And I just, my gyno just went crazy, dude, because I normally would have presence of like um, an aromasin, yeah. maybe some ADEX later in. But I went without because I was trying this new approach that a lot of coaches are doing now, which is better for your blood work, apparently, you know, because I'm trying to keep my mm-hmm. blood as, as healthy as possible. For me, it just fucked me. Just huh. fucked me. I know came out of nowhere, boom, locked in, wow. went really hard. I was doing check-in pictures and my nipples were hanging down like someone put oh, fucking crap. balls behind them. I was like, where? I've been competing since I was 18. I've never had it like that. Yeah. Um, and those were the only so two yeah, compounds? So, literally. Yeah, just those two. Dang. Just those two. That's why. It doesn't um, make sense to me. No, yeah. it doesn't make sense to me. It yeah. doesn't make sense to me, but it's the same same um, anabolics I've always used that I trust and I know a lot of people use, and I've done all my shows on it. Yeah. Um, so I just think maybe for me, after I spoke to Jordan, actually, Peter's about it, and he said that he finds Masteron for him personally isn't great at controlling E2. Okay. He's, uh, he said that other compounds are far more effective for him personally anyway. So after that is when I was like, you know what, it makes sense. Maybe that was just the issue. So anyway... Yeah, it's cool. I had the surgery. I, I had the surgery done, which means that, I, you know, I'm able to now do whatever and just hammer master on. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Hammer, master on. <laughs> hammer, hammer everything. <laughs> no, so yeah, that, which is so strange because you know master on shouldn't aromatize anyways. So it's just so no. weird. So I, it's that is wild. The, the test, even a low amount of testosterone for me goes a long way in pushing making my E2 right. I think I'm high uh, E2 naturally. Okay. Um, and I just. I just think that just got out of control, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, obviously, I came to Milos off the back of of that, where I kind of had my calories in a stable point because I had the surgery, so I wanted to keep my body in a relatively good composition and not be too heavy, mm-hmm. yeah. so that the surgery was easy for them to do. I was in the two seventies or something, like maybe mid two seventies, and then, uh, like I say, actually, so I've put on quite a lot of weight because I was in the mid two seventies. So now I'm like three hundred. God, it's like twenty five pounds mm-hmm. or something. So yeah, we've put quite a lot of weight actually. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, that's where I was with that. And then um, I had a plan with Milos. I said, I want to do the Arnold Classic and the Arnold Classic UK. Is it doable? And he said, yeah. So No kidding. Like I say, a few weeks in and just trying to trying to just force any growth I can get out of myself now before I diet yeah. a little bit later. And that's that's really where we're at. So Yannick can push- say hello, by the way, guys. She wanted to say hello to you all quickly because she's... Uh, Tell her we- hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. She What's going you on? <laughs> Good job spotting the 750-pound squat the other day. Yeah, it's a good, good job spotting me on the squat. Yeah. Oh, this is love hearts. Yeah, she's doing love hearts for you. you there you go. Well, I'm going to ask her a favor on air now. Do you mind grabbing me a glass of water? Is that right, my love? Yeah. Prove how lovely you are. Thank you. <laughs> I will, I will, I will, I will. I will. So you're there pushing you up. Oh, yeah, so, so. yeah, you're pushing up now, and, and you're, you're putting on some size. I wanted to ask you um, – is his approach with insulin changed at all? Because I know he, I mean, Milos was like literally the inventor of mm. exogenous insulin in bodybuilding. And he used to do, 
you know, high around training is, is really where yeah, it's pretty you much same still. Okay. Okay. Pretty pretty yeah. Same. Yeah. So yeah, like most of your nutrient timing is just like excessive amount of carbohydrate intake and anything that's going to help push towards, I suppose, growth. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The supplementation, like amino acids, um, all are kind of around the training window, really creatine monohydrate, just anything like that that helps facilitate recovery and growth really is just prioritized around the training window with a little bit of, you know, glycogen attached to it and some insulin to help with the, you know, shuttling, I suppose. Um, mm. it's, it's something I have, I have done before myself, but it's just, yeah. um, or it was kind of like not so specific with Milos. Obviously he looks at your physique and he's like, okay, certain days will have maybe more than others, depending on what he's trying to improve. I can, like he hasn't said that to me, but I know that's what he's doing. Yeah. So like shoulder, shoulder day, he'll probably push the glycogen harder than other days for me because shoulders uh-huh. are one of my body parts that probably are not so good, which makes sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. And it's always things that you think I should do, but you never really do because you just get complacent in your own approach. So it's nice mm. to have someone else drill it into you and you just follow orders, you know? Yeah. 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 Now with, with training, I know he likes to do the giant sets and all of that. Has he talked to you at all about doing anything different? Or are you just doing your own thing that you've always done with training? Um, he's not too forceful, but he says, James, if you can introduce some of that around the, you know, the tail end of your training, it's worth doing. Okay. Yeah. So I still, I still like to go in the gym and, you know, move load. Of course, but but yeah, but I might find myself, you know, towards the tail end of an exercise, uh, a workout, perhaps pairing up a couple of exercises, throwing in a drop set. Yeah, um, I'm not really a giant set guy, just more so because of convenience. Because I think giant sets are quite hard to pull off in public gym spaces. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Be, let's be I, real guys. I've actually told guys in my gym, no, yeah, no giant, giant setting. Set, you bastards. Yes. Yeah, giant exactly. Set I don't blame you. On a Monday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> peak hours. No, not everyone trying to do giant sets. But yeah, so I, I a super set at most. But like, I do like doing rest balls and drop sets and stuff like that, and just stretching and I suppose just trying to intensify a, a session if I can in some demeanor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like shoulders today. You know, I might do like towards the end i'll do some sort of lateral raise where i do like up and down the rack old school mm, yeah then, oh, yeah you know, yeah because they was they always feel good so yeah a lot of it's instinctive still but obviously at the beginning of a workout or when i'm initially doing a certain type of movement load is still priority yeah yeah you're still testing against previous workouts for sure man like and i'm not a super logger don't get me wrong like i'm not like i'm not as enthusiastic about that as Jordan like Jordan would literally go to the end of the earth to pull five pounds more than last week <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean like yeah whereas I'm kind of like I go on a day-to-day basis and I know that there's factors that dictate that sometimes you can't do what you did before yeah so I'm not married I'm not married to it I do like it and if I can take it I'll take it but if I don't feel like mm-hmm. it's the day where I take it I won't I'll just make it intense in other ways um you know some days if you I, put up I, a seven and a half plate squat other days some days and, and some days like, honestly like some days i might get under a squat and just change the tempo to be even half that tempo and butcher myself on five plates right do you know what i mean just depending yeah for it's, sure. it's, it's it's really like how do i feel about today and also instinctively how does my muscles feel like today hmm. like when you're like quite uh, understanding of your own body and you kind of feel like something's needed you just do it like mm-hmm. I might do a workout where I'm like, I need more blood volume in my quads today than, than load because they feel flat. <clears throat> Therefore right. I'll probably, I'll do like hack squats and like get in the hole and like really like spend some time in it just to get that stretch. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then other days I'm like, no, I've got to move. I've got to move some load today because they're feeling weak and they need to get stronger again. So that my sets that are like the other sets are stronger because it's all carryover. Like for me, like those, those really fucking heavy sets. Yeah, they're done in order to do heavier sets with the crazy shit. Right. You know what I mean? So when I get on a hack squat, I can do some fucking absurd numbers because I've been throwing in the barbell work every now and then or whatever. So it's all just to translate to other movements, really. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I, I got a question for you. I, you know, a couple of years ago, you said something on one of our shows that I actually made it into a clip because it was such a cool piece where you talked about how, you know, going to that that dark place that we go to sometimes in training that you found that like going to that place, it started following you around. You oh, felt yeah, like yeah. Know, that was I just know, like a yeah, cloud. Yeah. yeah. Remember that you were yeah, saying like, yeah. it was just like a cloud that followed you around. Where are you yeah. at with that relationship to turning that on and turning that off today? Cause that's something I know continues to evolve as we, as we mature in bodybuilding. Uh, uh, it's weird. Cause again, that's like the difference between someone like me and Jordan. I don't summon on it. I am um, 
you know, like squatting yesterday, that's me just like passive as hell. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just like, okay, I like to move weight. There's weight on my back. Let's move it. There's no, I don't want to think about the shit that's so sad, man. I do that enough. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I really, I really try to avoid summoning uh, a kind of dark, <laughs> yeah, summoning like a dark emotion in order to make something move. Yeah. Because, I don't know, just like I say, it lingers. And if it lingers for too long, then it can stop you sleeping at night, you know? Like I, mm-hmm. I have a hard, like I said earlier, I have a hard time sometimes just through becoming an older man and understanding mortality and things because, you know, life experience happens, you lose people um, and you see things happen for the real and it affects you long term. So I don't want to add to that, you know, I don't really, uh, the gym's my place to go and test myself, but I can test myself in a way that's like, it's enjoyable. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it doesn't requ- and it doesn't require me to like, literally be like a savage and i know it sounds weird as people like it's good to be a savage and it is if you can do that but if i be a savage i'll commit arson or something do you know what i mean like fuck that <laughs> like, do you know what i mean like i i i i dare be savage because i know that it will be something i can't come back from yeah do, do you find that with your nice career man. that's something you didn't need as much because i think a lot of guys when you when you get started it's like we've talked about this on the show driving to the gym you're amping yourself up between sets you're pacing around the gym and then as you get older and you kind of it, it becomes a light switch like because i i feel mm. like you see that like i can make a wise crack in the gym and then walk over and do something ridiculous oh, 10 seconds later without thinking about it do you do you find it for you that that was part of it too is like now you just go no it's because i'm lucky to be here and i can do seven and a half plates so why not I think ego lets me do the big lifts. I think I summon the the wanting to be respected for what I can do. Uh-huh. Like I, I do like res- like I do command respect without like I I I want to be able to say at the end of my career that people looked at me and they were like that man was able to do some crazy shit. Yeah, and that's that you thought that alone now. isn't. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and that thought alone for me is enough without having to get too deep to uh-huh. do things. You know, I. I I am responsive to what people, I am responsive to things. So right. I take positive comments extremely well, but I also take negative comments extremely well. So like, um, mm. like not well, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So to heart. I, yeah. To heart. Like I take a lot of things to heart, but then if someone says something like if they, if someone was like, I believe that you can do this, hmm. it goes a really long way with me and it will happen. So, mm-hmm. Again, that's like why I hire Milos because he's the kind of guy that will tell you he believes in you. And mm-hmm. I do, I, I relate this. This is I relate this to being like absent fathered mm-hmm. because I've always mm-hmm. kind of had to like, I've always latched on to anyone that's shown a level of care towards me who I feel. Um, who I feel is mature enough to mature enough and experienced enough that it's okay for me to warrant feeling that way towards them. Right. Um, without trying to get too like deep. This is why I had a really, I, I cared a lot about Patrick's opinion of me, you know, slightly older man. He's a father himself. Um, he'd speak to me in a manner that I would imagine a supportive father would. Right. And that was like, was really encouraging for me. Yeah. So I don't know if I get a comment from someone I respect like that, like telling me you can do something, you can be whatever you wish you want to be. That goes a really long way with me. And that's why I can pull off some of these things I've pulled off. Cause I think some of those, um, past conversations or past, uh, yeah, past conversations really have kind of stuck with me and, um, mm-hmm. allowed me to just, just channel that towards it. So I channel I channel positivity really and belief. Yeah. I think. I like that. That's awesome. I I want to comment. Uh, you know, the top comment on your squat video is Ian Valer, all around <laughs> strongest bodybuilder ever. I said it. <laughs> That's a big statement. That's a big statement. <laughs> Ian's too. Ian's too kind because I've seen Ian do some feats of strength. I've obviously seen um, many, many bodybuilders do some crazy feats of strength. So that's why my comment was blow. I don't believe that is the case, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what's funny, though, is is that there's a lot of people who can do a couple of things. 
you know, mm. that are very, very impressive. That's it. But mm. there aren't many. Like, I mean, I, I always remind guys when they're like, oh, you can do this and this. I'm like, yeah, and I can't press shit. <laughs> Nothing. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> and I think that that's a cool thing that's different about your training is it's like, yeah, I can rep a ridiculous weights on an incline barbell and I can walk mm. over and row or deadlift or squat and, and all the most basic, like you were saying earlier about things you respect, like I love seeing a, a gravity and a bar and weight and someone moving it, yeah. whatever it's supposed to be, you know, a, sh yeah. a shoulder press, whatever. And you really do all those things. Plus it, you're a real bodybuilder, meaning you're really that's, that's good the at thing it. I care and that's about a the different most. thing. I, I, yeah, like, <laughs> like when there's there's a lot of power it, lifters that do bodybuilding. You are a bodybuilder who can train that way. Yeah, That's a different thing. Yeah, you know? I, I I think the thing that again, this is like why I respect Ian because I don't like someone could come at me and say I've seen people lift more than Ian, but I'd be like, yeah, but did they lift as much as Ian and get to the Olympia and were an amazing bodybuilder? <laughs> mm. Because it's different. It's, 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 that's what I mean. It's different if you're an Olympian. Well, and sure. fucking one of the strongest like yeah and i know a few people that are one of them and that's where like i'm like well don't like compare them to your gym bro that can pull 800 pounds for 10 reps that guy can't even win a regional show right right like like it's not the same he's missing half the fucking he's missing half of the the fucking yeah picture yeah like and again on the opposite side you show me the most impressive bodybuilder but he can't pull 800 pounds yeah so i'm like you got guys like ian that can do both. That's where my respect lies. You know, oh, I'm with you. You're like top in the world on t like two, two things, things almost. Like, <laughs> yeah. wrong, there, there are like, yeah, there, there are obviously there's always, always going to be, um, you know, strong men and powerlifters that do pull way more, but they've dedicated their whole life to doing so. The fact that you go in the gym and you're a bodybuilder who just reps shit and managed to get that strong for me was mm -hmm. always impressive. And, you know, I, I that's why like I don't take offense really like if someone's like yeah but I know someone is like I get tagged in a lot of videos of people lifting maybe roughly the same as me or whatever and I'm like it's cool you're strong it's cool you're strong and then secretly in my head I'm like you ain't won a bodybuilding show yet <laughs> <laughs> like do you know what I mean like, that's not me being an arsehole it's just like uh, it's just that you have to remember that we're not like we're not one faceted right like there's more and 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 that's I like multi multifaceted faceted people can't say the word anyway you know what I mean so people like yeah. that's why I always looked up to Ian as well as a friend I think um, he's proved his kind of place in bodybuilding as one of the crazy strong guys and and oh, yeah. seven for the Olympia multiple times it's like come on how can you not respect <laughs> the guy how can you not respect the guy so yeah. yeah he's one of the only guys that came to our gym and uh, repped the two hundreds. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. Ian's a very yeah, good yeah. presser. Very good presser. I've oh, seen yeah. some crazy presses from him. On the him, incline, man. actually. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Oh, uh, yeah. Put yeah. him up. That was always my most, like, you know, a lot of people, <clears throat> we got great reviews, by the way, on that uh, Ronnie video that we watched the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had people email me. Oh, no kidding. I think the one thing that, like, most people didn't understand that I thought was so impressive was when he's doing the 200-pound dumbbells, but he leans them back himself. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, like, that's yeah, more yeah, insane yeah, yeah. than the price. He just kicked him up. Yeah. yeah. And then he just puts no him wobble. in, and I'm like, Who? zero wobble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just kicks him up like they're, they're, they're 120s and then yeah. reps out 12 and puts him down. I'm like, what? Like it's nothing. Smile <laughs> on his face, you know? Yeah. That was I real mean, heavy. The, the kick up is more, <laughs> is, is more impressive to me than the press. If you'll hand them to me, I can move them. But I can't kick him up. Like, no. And the fact that, do you know what? A, a, a kick up on, a kick up, because he does it on a flat as well. Yeah, and the kick up on a flat is yeah, really, rolls back. yeah, man, yeah. The kick up on a flat is really difficult to control. Like an incline, you kind of know your stop point. Yeah, your yeah. The traps get buried in. Well, you just go woo all the way all back. The way. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he just rolls back like, like a turtle. Woo, yeah, like 400 that's how you pounds. know. You With know 400 pounds. Strong, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absurd. I still love. I still love like watching some of his old videos, like the squat videos and stuff, and. Yeah. It's the front squat with I think he did the front squat with like six plates aside. Like that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I love how it, it kind of comes off his front delt on the last rep, he so he just it. drops it on the floor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Those are the best. Great gym. I like I, I try trained in there with branch like last uh was it this year? I don't know. Anyway, I had to squat when I was in there, obviously, because 
you know, it's Metro Flex. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> standing, standing where Ronnie used to squat and just trying to create your own little dream uh, sequence, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I remember I, that's I did bent rows on the the wooden box with got, the rack yeah, that they do bent yeah, rows on. Rack. oh yeah yeah you know and you get up there and you grab the bar and you're like oh the bar is a bit bent so this is gonna be hard to hold on to and you just guy yeah, i guess i better <laughs> hold on to it i'm not gonna walk around and look for a straight bar because i don't know no, if there is one you, so you just grab the bar that's there and you just get going and you think oh this is ronnie's box and ronnie's rack yeah. and this is wild yeah, you know? I think that's the all the cool stuff that you'll get to do with the gym too, James. Is like, I mean, you've done it as well. You you go somewhere like I'll, I will never forget going to Temple the first time and just coming down the stairs and being like, I can't believe this wow. is happening. Like, yeah, yeah. I've seen this on my television seven hundred times. Right, you know what right. I mean? And then you're walking through the place, and I, I think that that's a part that um, I look forward to with your gym as well. Is like I used to go to Venice. Uh, back back in the day, 2011-ish. I would go yeah. sometimes real, real early in the morning. It was empty. And they didn't play music. But the gym, the walls had energy. Like, from the yeah. things that had happened in there. Yeah, and it was yeah. still hardcore at the time. They've kind of... It's a cool gym now, but it's lost that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I used to go in there and just... I would like, man, it does, it's four in the morning. Five in the morning, whenever they opened, I'd walk in right when they opened. There's four people yeah. in here. And you could still... You were like, you're humming with energy just because the things that had happened there, you know, and that you'd seen, yeah. it's crazy. The, the, yeah. the history itself is in the, it's, like I say, it's in the veins of the place. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you can't take that away. Like, well, it takes a long time for that to, to, to dissipate. You know, you do yes. get a long, like you say, so. Yeah, yeah they yeah, found a way eventually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I went, I went to Golds in like 2018 with Sasan. Okay. Uh, he was competing in the Cali Pro and, I still felt a little bit of that essence there, you know, uh -huh. a little bit. Yeah. I think even more so since then, it's kind of. It was like pre 2020, so. you could still see yeah. the essence, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why I, I felt yeah. there was still some charm for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bodybuilding's funny. It takes you around. Like, I've been, you consider everywhere we've all been between the, 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 the crew of us, you know. Um, it, it's such a global thing, isn't it? And like, there's no place in the world untouched by it. It's I met you crazy. for the first time. It was at the the Arnold that almost didn't happen. That was the first yeah. time I met you in person. We were standing cool. there backstage. 20, 20 yeah, just before yeah, lockdown. 2020. And I, I yeah. remember I was like, hey, let me get a picture with you, James. We were standing backstage where they were like shooting some video and stuff. And you stopped and you're yeah. like, we're really here. Like, we haven't met before, have we? And I was like, yeah, holy yeah. shit. No, we it's haven't. Weird. But I, like, yeah, I didn't and, think about that. I was like, oh, there's James. How's it uh, going, man? You always, when, when you do meet <laughs> other people, you always ask the question if you have or not because... Yeah, obviously digitally, we're also kind of connected that you kind of feel like you have met everyone before. Yeah, I still meet people now, and I'm like, is this the first time? And I have to like double check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I always find it. I always find it odd when I'll see, you know, I'll see you in the UK, and then I'll see you in Germany, <laughs> and then I'll see you in Dubai, yeah, and then I'll see you at the Olympia, and I'll think, Jesus, my my dad lives like two hours away and I think I see James <laughs> <I've seen him. laughs> more. You know what I mean? Like often, it's, yeah. it, and you go, yeah. Jack, am I like a terrible person or is this just how my life is? Like, is Dude, this just we're all the same. how things we're all are? The same. My, my sister you know? lives two hours up the road. I've, I see people from the other side of the globe more often than I see my sister, for sure. You know? You know? I'm going to be in Sweden like this week for the uh, NPC, the Swedish uh, shows. Oh, cool. And you know, I see them people more than I see my auntie who lives 20 minutes down the road. Yeah. So it's just what it is. We're a big family and everyone just like catches up often, you know? Yeah. It's funny how used to travel you get at a certain point and how normal it becomes to you. You know, you especially because of you've like with mutant on a mission and stuff, you've been like all over the place, man. Yeah. That's I'm still, I'm still not the best. I'm still not the best traveler. I still kind of get a bit of anxiety before I have to go somewhere. Yeah. Do you do any like any rituals? Like, do you take an Ambien or do you do, like no, drink? A, I just like drink a relaxing tea max. at the I airport. Or <laughs> no, I, I I stress to the point where I nearly have a breakdown, and then and then Yannick is just like, "Well, it's too late now that we're on the plane." <laughs> what what's the, <laughs> what's, on the, the plane. <laughs> what's the stress about it? Is it about like forgetting stuff and making sure you have it, or is it about the actual flight? Like, do you not like? the space on the plane I think it I, I think it's just me overcomplicating everything 
I think me, I'm just a right. thinker, so yeah. I just can't remember. I'm not very, I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to switch off. So, um, I, and I, and I, if I'm doing something that isn't, I'm kind of selfish with my energy levels. So if it's not me, like, oh, I need to do this for me. It sounds bad, but I got to do it for someone else. Sometimes I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, can I get like <laughs> yeah. a bit grumpy? So and I'm like, I shouldn't even be going to this thing. Blah, blah, blah. And I have a moan and then I'm fine. Once I get there, I'm absolutely fine. I have the best time in my life. So it's yeah. just me being a, it's me just being a grumpy 34 year old, you know, it's just <laughs> yeah, not yeah. anything in particular. I, I, that's a big part of it. I, I find I get grumpy about the trip that's coming. Cause I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't have time for this. I got so much going on. I got, I can't believe it. You know, I got to go away. I got to pack all this stuff. But then once I'm actually like there or even on the plane there, yeah. I'm sort of like, okay, let's go. <laughs> it's like, all perspective, isn't it? You, yeah, it's, it's, if you, it if you is. choose to look at it from the perspective, of, I, I'm not someone who gets excited very easily and I wish I was. I really right. wish I was because I know a lot of people like, you know, they say they're going on holiday. The whole week before they go on holiday, they're so excited about going away. I've just never been like that. And I, yeah. I mm -hmm. would love to know what that feels like where you're really anticipating something you do. <laughs> it's it's bad when know, someone I, I, can't relate I, I, to you, though, James. My dude, mother used to ask me all the time. She'd be like, are you excited? And I'm like, no. I'm busy. Yeah. And she's like, why? Are, are you mad? I'm like, I'm nothing. I I'm not I'm just, exactly. It's just, just no feelings. Just, yeah. it's, like, you know, it's, it's, it's like going to the you know going somewhere to the grocery store tomorrow is the same as getting on a flight to go yeah. to another country. I think the only thing that changed after the uh, the 2020 incident was the realization that we were lucky to do it. I definitely had that yeah. where I'd go, man. Yeah. I mean, between that between that and the near death thing, I definitely realized yeah. like you know when I'd be a little pissed about getting on a 14 15 hour flight, I'm like, there are people that could have never done this. And yeah, I'm getting yeah. paid to do it, and I'm complaining. There's yeah. something wrong with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to take a step back. For sure, yeah. it's, it is about acknowledging, you know, how lucky like we really, really are. Like mm -hmm. for any of us that are like, able to pretty much bodybuild full time and yeah. not have to do too many commitments, I do think it's a sign of like I was thinking this the other day. Like I do think, generally speaking, we as people are just not as uh capable as our previous generations and it's not because um it's not because we've necessarily become like weaker or anything it's just because everything's changed so much that we kind of everything's laid out to make us that way right because convenience is such a thing now like amazon uh prime like in england you can use amazon to order everything you don't oh, have yeah. to go nowhere you don't have to so we've just become very like somewhat kind of lazy culture so then the minute we are yeah. expected to do or be anything we're very quick to kick up a fuss because nothing's really a challenge anymore if that makes sense and i'm not right you know, i don't i don't like to admit it but yeah i i know that my fucking granddad and his predecessors were probably far more capable people than personally oh. than i am <laughs> far, far, humiliating <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, imagine any of us like stuck out in the woods and like we didn't have any food or fire. Like, can any of yeah. us light a fucking fire here? I don't it, know. It, it, rem fire. it reminds me of uh, like the I I saw some guys talking about like uh, w you know would you rather be a king in the 1600s or like these other things and a lot of guys were like oh a king in the 1600s and the one guy's like if you get like scratched by a cat you could die yeah like you don't right, know yeah. antibiotics like. Like you could Just die of food poisoning at age thirty so easily. Right. You could yeah. like you a king in the sixteen hundreds versus like middle class now with Xbox yeah. and yeah. like <laughs> legal <iPhone>. weed. Like <laughs> on an dentists. iPhone, like forget yeah. about it. There's no comparison, you know? Like yeah. <laughs> I, I think we about lose that. that. Yeah, we we uh, yeah. I, I always think about that and then that's another reason why sometimes I feel like, man, just be capable. Come on. Get it together. <laughs> Yeah, you know, some, people, some people didn't. People didn't have a choice back in the day. You know, they just had to make do and survive. So yeah. we need to just, yeah, do the same. But, you know, I know it's a yeah. sign of the times, really. You know, it's. Uh, I did a video the other day on my YouTube, and it's like, it's, it's a bit of a deep one. It's just like saying we're living in a digital age, and it was just explaining just a lot of my kind of feelings towards how it affects us as people. You know, mm -hmm. and um, you know. Again, like what we were talking about earlier, like some of the things about comparison and 
you know, every day when you're looking on something like Instagram is you're being shown what you don't have and then you start to feel resentment and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, like I said, I feel like it's kind of almost the powers that be have set it up to be that way to make us weaker men. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they want us to be like, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, nothing, but it, it's in the benefit of the people above. If we're easier to control and we're easier to, if we're weak, if basically we're less resilient, right? Absolutely, you know, because then we're easier to persuade, we're easier to follow orders, we're easier to whatever. Yeah, you know? I was listening to some guys talk about like, at what point will will we be living in VR? You know, and we'll just our bodies will just be hooked up to like feeding tubes and we'll just be, you know, eating filet mignon steak in our matrix, you know, that whole thing. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. And, think of the matrix. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, we're kind of already, there's people that are already essentially, you know, not really living in reality. And there's sort I'm like of like a half you know, a step away from that. I mean, this, right, this, right, like, right, right. Like, this is, me you know, you got, out right now. you guys, James, you got James gaming four hours a night, but then <laughs> yeah. he's also putting 700 real pounds on his back. So he's still connected to thing, reality yeah. and gravity, yeah. but, <laughs> but like, how, like again, how many, how long before it's this till it's this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because yeah. once upon a time, it wasn't even this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on, so, it's on the wall. Like, realistically, you, yeah, you have to, like, it's not out of consideration. Um, and it is potentially there. You know, you look at, like, how AI is now. I don't know what I'm looking at on Instagram, whether it's real or not now. I've got houses being shown to me that are, like, really <laughs> aesthetic and beautiful. Right. And yes. I'm like, and I look at it and I'm like, that's, that's, that is an AI. And it's, it's an AI that's done in a way that is based on all the information we fed this AI because it's trying to show us something that we find super duper attractive. Right. And basically that's how the world is now. Now I can't tell what's fucking real and fake. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. Very, very valid. I, I, uh, I watched an I watched an Instagram reel the other day of some airplanes flying around. You know what? And it, I thought I was watching air show footage. And then I start reading the caption and it was an AI generated video yeah. of yeah. fighter jets. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I saw the same the other day. I saw, I saw a tornado, a uh, tornado that looked really fascinating. Love tornadoes. Yeah. Saw it, and then it's like at the bottom, it's saying, Yeah, it's an AI generated tornado. Ah, oh, man. Like, it's, it's mad because like, I can't trust, you just can't. The only thing you can now, you know, trust actually is this. But isn't it weird see? how. Yeah, but isn't it weird because all that we remember and all that we really talk about with our friends and whatnot isn't this. Yeah. Right. Like, I haven't spoke to you about anything I've seen physically today. We're speaking to each other about what we've seen on Instagram. Right. But that's, that is, that's just, it's, again, it's quite weird, isn't it? Like, yeah. I don't now often walk down the street, see something, come home and tell Yannicka about it. But I will right. show me Yannicka on my phone 16 times a day about a post about a cute cat that I've seen. Right, right. 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 <laughs> right. But you'll no, see no. a cute cat and you won't take a picture of it. No. No. <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, like, wow. we're, we're, you know, wherever we're going with this, we're just saying this so, you know, again, it's not me trying to say um, I'm not like a conspiracy theorist or anything, but, you know, patterns are there. You can see yeah. something going in a certain direction. It doesn't take a genius to see the direction we're going in. And there's mm. definitely a change occurring. And it's getting faster and faster because technology does that. I can't remember the word for that, but it's basically the accumulation of, you know, tech and its speed of increase, like increased speed of development. And what happens is over time, it gets quicker and quicker. So it actually multiplies in how fast it develops to the point of what happens at the end. Yeah. Right. Well, where are well, we I going think with you're going to lose, though, a lot of... Um, the the endorphins and things you feel from doing things it's like i know a lot of people like i am not a i'm a guy that uses this credit card to fix everything i'm like oh that's broken i'll just get it fixed with paying this guy but you can't deny that there's a different feeling between success on a computer and success moving dirt in a wheelbarrow and filling up something and and physically walking away from something you built i think that's something people need to make a more regular part of their life however that is not to be some drastic thing i mean i still wash my own car just because i like to but it is yeah. something that i look at and go 
okay, there needs to be more of this in my life because I do spend my entire life staring at the same computer. They're just not usually friends mm. on the other side of it, you know? Mm. Absolutely. I think that's a really valid thing to say. I look at my neighbor, my old neighbor, a gentleman called Mike, and he's an older gentleman and he's out the front, you know, washing his car multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. And I know why. I know why. It's to keep in touch. Hmm. Right. It's to not lose touch. Yeah. You know? I said this to myself the other day. I was walking down the street. I think I was walking down the street. I don't know where I was. Um, but it was, I said to myself, if I was to just ask myself a really simple question, what do I need more from in life? Like, it was just a really basic question. And the first thing that comes to your head is the answer. And the word was ocean. Hmm. Right. And then that, so that said to me, like, okay, then I'm lacking... It's like when your body's lacking a mineral, you not, you crave orange juice because you're lacking vitamins. I, yeah. I said the word ocean because I, I lack the sea breeze, the smell of the ocean, the, the, mm -hmm. the horizon, the sunset. So it goes, you know, like that one answer has led me down a path of, wow, there's a lot of things that they clearly mean something to me and I'm not putting myself there enough. Um, and I'm starving myself of something that's fundamental that could probably save a life essentially right you know because there's living and there's living and and i like i said i asked myself that question to consciously to consciously get an answer to understand where am i at hmm. and the fact that the mm -hmm. word that came back to me was such a vivid and particular thing it made a lot of sense um ask yourself what? that like if, if i if you know if i could put you all in you know in that situation where you just say what do i what do i need more of in life and it could be anything from fucking chocolate bar to fucking one word answer sunshine whatever it'd be interesting to know what the immediate response is in people you ask and i think right. it would tell you a lot i think it would tell you a lot about those people and what and then that what it tells you about those people would probably that answer would probably be very helpful in understanding how to perhaps improve their existence one of my favorite moments on our podcast ever was the first time we had you on and you told us the full story about the mount kilimanjaro trek yeah. oh yeah and the, the the what was it three weeks two weeks you spent on the mountain about two weeks and and um and i've told that story to a few people along the way and i've even sent them that episode to watch because i thought that was such an impactful episode for me just listening to you tell the story yeah i so i wanted to bring it up with you and just ask you how often do you still reference that experience in your own life because it i remember the way you described it was was pretty profound i, I still reference it quite a lot because um because everything we've just spoke about that's the answer to it almost like uh, a time where there was an absence from technology and being around the elements and people and only having the option of being present with what's in front of you. So mm -hmm. anytime I find myself kind of really discussing this, that's a perfect segue to that conversation about that experience. And I have to talk about it with people who I feel perhaps are in need of that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I know someone's in a rut or just like stuck in a cycle, and they haven't had an opportunity to break away and just get in touch with themselves a bit, then that conversation can come up quite quite frequently because a lot of people come to you and they say like, where do I like find joy? Like, where do I find some sort of like happiness? And I don't have an answer for that because I think joy and happiness is something that I don't even understand. But I think an experience like that at least gives you time away from all this that you're not then, um, you're not then occupied so much that you can't think about right where is happiness and where is joy because you can only get answers when there's some silence and we live in a noisy time like every day like we're surrounded by noise and how on earth is anyone meant to come up with a, a solution to anything when there is no time or no absence from influence you know? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the obsession, right? That's why, like, you when you drive a car now, people get to a stoplight and have to get on their phone. I'm like, it's yeah. 90 seconds. Like, do you re like yeah. you got to get on Instagram, right? Like, there, there's an obsession with being busy and keeping their mind busy, and there's definitely a superpower involved in being still and just yeah. having thoughts. Like, that's how I that's how I got into cigars on accident. I had no idea, but now it's like a nightly thing. It's 
you know, especially when it's just in the winter and stuff. It's a bonfire, a cigar, and silence. Perfect. I just sit out there for two hours, and it's amazing what you come in with after that, yeah. or, or have friends over. And same thing, you'll realize you had you know three or four people over, and your phone's been in the house for three hours, and you're like, shit, yeah. I forgot I had that thing. And yeah. and that's not something that happens in in any of our lives very often, you know. Because no. for me, the rest of the day, you know, it's it's within reach all the time. Yeah, and that's where that's where let's cycle all the way back to the very beginning of this talk. The gym used to be that place mm -hmm. for all of us, and then th everything changed. So now you're in a gym, and that isn't a place where people go to disconnect. They go there to connect. True and. And that's affected everything, and that's why that's why it's very difficult sometimes being a certain way and finding yourself in that environment and thinking that it's a good place. You know, absolutely. Does that makes sense. It's full yeah. cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, you used to go to the gym and it was phone in the locker. Yeah. Grab the grab the steel, the, grab the bar, fill that bar, and nothing else existed for two hours. Yeah. And then now it's like, okay, set up the phone. Let me get, make sure the mic's attached to the fucking phone. Let's make sure my um, <laughs> my um, tripod's in the right place. You're never truly disconnected because you're always thinking about, is this right? Is this right? Just where the gym should be a place where you go to just fucking let every thought on your mind disappear and you just get in touch with yourself. And it right. just doesn't happen anymore. And that's like why and i totally understand people of a generation like ours or the one before have a certain opinion on everything now and no one will understand that's not from that generation because again like i said it's not their fault because you're born into what you're born into and if you're born into a time where that's the norm you don't know any different yeah that's all you know you mm -hmm. all you know and it's 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 a shame because it's hard because you can never educate them on what was before because it will never be that way again yeah there, i had a discussion with a friend the other day he said how much would you pay for high quality 4k video endless amounts of all your early 90s training footage because that's what we have now right yeah endless yeah. endless amounts of 4k training footage and i said you know what i think i'm actually super lucky that I don't have a single second of it because it's the way I remember it. It's, huh. it's mine. No one gets to judge it. No one gets to tell me what I was doing wrong. No one gets to analyze it. And I think maybe yeah, that's a lucky thing for my generation of bodybuilders is that, yeah, you know, we, we got the benefit of the, the tech later in our careers, but we had that magic window where there was none. <laughs> You know, I got that taste of like, there is no footage. There, there is no group photo from the gym. I, those guys are just the way I remember them. You know, I think that's, I think that's probably one of the most profound things that's been said on this podcast today. Like when you were speaking on that just now, like that, that hit home for me massively. And I think there's so much weight in what you just said, like the privacy of your past yeah, and the memories of your own and the nostalgia that you hold dear. Mm -hmm. that isn't to be shared and that isn't for other people to penalize or, you know, um, dissect. Like you, your your history is your own history and that's something that's personal to you and people now haven't got that. Yeah, right. right. No, you know? no. <laughs> there is no well, privacy James, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate your time, man. We took uh, a full slice of your daily pie. And, uh, no, I, I really appreciate it. No, honestly, guys, like, I love these kind of conversations. And I know they're not for everybody, but I'm damn happy to have them. And I really appreciate you guys and your, you know, the fact that our personalities will kind of meet in a good place. So, well, you. you're Me definitely, too. you have definitely never let us down, James. So thanks <laughs> for your. <laughs> Thanks for your My third favorite. appearance, our most frequent guest ever to shed. <laughs> oh, and, and we, will get you, we will keep an eye out because we're going to drag him over for a mutant on the mission to the, the Absolutely. shed. Absolutely. Oh, hell yeah. Coming back. So, we already scheduled yeah, Arnold UK, so oh, we're that, coming back. So, Perfect. 
Time to go. Time. I know oh, where I'm man. headed. Okay. Yeah, I know where you're headed as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Hit up James Hollingshead. What's it? Hollingshead 89? What is it? Yeah, yeah. Hollingshead 89. And I'll be sure to put a link to your YouTube channel in the description. So if people have, they probably already are subscribed, but if they haven't, go over and check that out. You've got like all the, like the whole Gyno saga and all of that is over there too. So everybody can check that stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, Awesome. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. Remember everybody, it's just bodybuilding.